What's going on? This is Cody, and you're watching B-Boy 45, broadcasting from the Seacrest Studios. We've got another special edition of Maya's latest news, the latest news to keep you in the groove with Maya, <laughs> which sometimes we shorten to Maya's latest news, because it's a really long title, but I really like it. And we've got a very special guest on the computer with us. Yeah. It's Jonathan McLean! <laughs> oh. <laughs> there we go. The crowd goes crazy. I was just gonna do it for myself. No, I, I see, I'm not the I'm not the usual button person, and sure. so uh, I'm a little delayed in the button. So you just cut a little slow clap there. That's Maya, right, take it fine. away, girl. Okay, so um, I wanted to ask you about your new Netflix show, Prince of Peoria. Yeah. Um, so it comes out on Friday, mm -hmm. and I'm so excited to watch it. Um, I was wondering what um, your favorite or one of your favorite memories is from the set. Well, so for, for everybody who doesn't know, Prince of Peoria is a new Netflix show. Um, it does. Uh, it's 16 episodes. Um, eight of them will be out this Friday. And then the other eight will be out, I think, just after the new year. I'm not sure about the, the date yet. We have to wait um, that, that long? I know, but that it builds the suspense <gasps> and makes it even more exciting. Okay. Um, and, uh, and, and so, yeah, and the show is about a young prince who moves to uh, America to make a friend and fulfill his dreams and things like that. And I play his dad. I play the king of the kingdom uh, that he is coming from to come to America. And I, it's a good question. I will tell you honestly, and Maya and I, for everybody who doesn't know, have known each other for a little while now, and this is the second time that I've called in, and we've met in person and hung out a little bit. So um, we met because I was on this Disney show, and um, and I loved that, as Maya knows. Like, I had a great time. And it's a wonderful show, and one of my good friends was the, was the guy who ran that show. Prince of Peoria, this new Netflix show that comes out on Friday, it's maybe my favorite working experience I've ever had. Maybe the best time I've ever had on a set. So they're all good. I have nothing but good stories. Um, you guys are going to meet this this young guy, Gavin, uh, who plays my son, and um, this guy, uh, Theo, who plays the character on the show, Teddy. And they're two of the best, not just young actors, but two of the best actors I've ever worked with. They're just terrific. Um, the Cynthia, who plays Gavin's, or plays uh, Theo's mom, is just incredible. But I guess if I really had to put thought, thought, thought behind it, it would be that I got to work a lot with Crystal the monkey, <laughs> who is the most, uh, I think she's the most famous uh, Simeon actress in Hollywood. Um, <laughs> Simeon means, means monkey. Uh, she's... Um, I was going to ask. Is, Crystal, <laughs> Crystal is the monkey from um, The Night at the Museum. <gasps> oh, yeah. Yeah. She is famous. So, and here's how talented Crystal is. She plays a guy <gasps> on Prince of Peoria. Whoa. Yeah, that, that's how good That's how good Crystal is. I mean, <laughs> not every female monkey can play a male monkey, but Crystal <laughs> is something else. So, um, so I I, it, was, it was really cool to, like, work with an animal because what they say is true don't ever work with babies or animals because there's no way you can look better than they do um <laughs> everything crystal did was amazing and funny and 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 i guess like her trainers were really cool and you know what later maya i will share with you and then you can put it wherever you want i have a, a video that i made of crystal um uh cleaning my ear <laughs> because when she'd sit on my shoulder, she'd just like groom me, like just pull stuff out of my ear and like pick my hair, like really, like like I'm a, like I'm you know like I'm her baby. Um, so I have a video. I'll send it to you later. You can show it wherever you want. But that was super fun, like working with a working with an animal that was as talented as anybody I've ever met. Was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty fun. <laughs> That's so cool. And she, and, and she steals the show, too. Like every time you see her in a scene, she steals the scene. It's super fun. It's super fun. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, so you're going to be in a new movie with George Lopez, Lopez and Edward James Olmos. Yes. Um, uh, so I can't wait to see it. Um, and I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the movie. Sure. 
Sure. Before I do that, I don't want to forget to do this. Um, I just wanted to show everybody that I, I am a true hardcore fan. Dang. I didn't have a chance to change my shirt today. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was trying to get home in time to change, but I want everybody to know. <laughs> Big Every time day. fan. The latest Every news. Every day, repping the latest news with Maya to keep you in the groove. <laughs> that um, is awesome. <laughs> Walking with Herb, yeah, is a movie. I just finished filming it in uh, New Mexico. I finished it like two weeks ago. Um, it'll be out sometime in 2019. Um, it is a movie about a guy um, played by Edward James Almos, which, do you know who he is, Maya? Have you seen him on Battlestar Galactica or any of the other? That doesn't quite sound in Maya's uh, wheelhouse, Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, he's, he's, it's interesting. He's not. He's was nominated for an Academy Award um, a while back for a movie he did. Um, he's, he's amazing, and uh, he's been pretty famous for like 50 years. And George Lopez is, I think, most people know him just as a stand-up comedian or from his talk show or his his sitcom or something like that. But. Um, this is a pretty dramatic movie about um, a guy named uh, Joe Amableamo, um, which uh, who is played by by Eddie Almos, and he's you know a bank manager in a small town, and he winds up over the course of a couple of years he loses his son-in-law his daughter's husband gets killed in uh i think afghanistan or iraq one of the two overseas and then when we meet him in the movie he's also just lost his grandchild his daughter's um his daughter's daughter uh falls ill and doesn't survive so he's had two major major life losses back to back and he's sort of questioning his place in life um, and what he believes and if there's any good in the world and all that kind of stuff. And there's a pretty famous movie called It's a Wonderful Life. You've seen It's a Wonderful Life ever? It's a Christmas movie. It comes on every year. It's from like the four, 1940s. It's a black and white movie. Yeah, I don't think so. That's okay. It features a, a famous actor named Jimmy Stewart and... The point of that movie is that Jimmy, uh, his character, also has sort of given up on hope. And it, at like the holidays, an, an angel comes to visit him and shows him how much better his life uh, is than he realizes and how much worse off the world would be if he weren't in it. This is kind of like that. There's sort of like this angel character who comes and visits uh, Eddie Olmos, and that character is played by George Lopez. So, but... Instead of like looking like a regular angel, like he rides in on a Harley, <laughs> he um, he wears like huge, big hats and like you know crazy like tie dye. I mean, like he's it's a he's a wild character, and George is kind of after watching him play, like he's the only person who could play this part. Like George Lopez is amazing in it; he's amazing in it, and he tells um, the character of Joe, played by Eddie Almos. Um, you are going to make people, you have a mission. You have a purpose. You have, there's a reason for you to be here. Feel good. And he says, what is my purpose? He says, you're going to win the golfing championship of the world. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I beg your, beg your pardon. He's like, and you're going to do that. And you're going to show that anybody can do anything. And that a regular person can achieve incredible you know, these amazing things and you're going to restore faith in, in everybody and it's going to be amazing. And then um, there's a couple of other really incredible actors in the cast. Uh, Billy Boyd, who was in the Lord of the Rings movies, is in it and he plays the golfer that goes head to head with uh, Eddie at the end. And Christopher McDonald, who's been around for a long time. Um, if anybody ever saw that old Adam Sandler movie, Billy Madison, which is also a golf movie, I think, or I don't know. Adam happy, did a golf movie one time. And Chris, Chris is in that, so he also plays a, a golf guy in this. So. so then they go off on this adventure, and I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but, you know, it's like this crazy kind of wacky movie to show that, basically to show that everybody matters, that everybody has purpose, that everybody can do something important, and even the smallest of people, quote-unquote small, Right. Because nobody's actually small, but like people that not everybody knows can make a major impact on the world. And then I play the guy who works in the bank where Joe is the manager 
And I've said that if um, George is like this sort of mystical like character who helps him find his happiness again, I'm like the down to earth one on the planet who helps him find it again. <laughs> um, and I, again, I don't want to say too much, but basically I kind of come in and do things that are equally annoying to Eddie Almost's character as George <laughs> does, just in a more like grounded way, not as much of a, you know, a, a spacey way, but more of an earthy way. And, um, and we're sort of the comic relief to, to, to Eddie, because, you know, if you've got a guy, that character I described, if he's gone through all of that, he's a pretty sad dude, right? Yeah. So our job is to make sure that the movie doesn't get too sad and to make sure that, you know, that, that it's, that the hope is, is all there. So I'm trying to talk about it without saying too much cause I don't want to give too much away, but that's, that's more or less what the movie is. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, we look forward to seeing yeah. it. Yeah. I look forward to you seeing it too. I look forward to everybody seeing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So what drew you to the project? Um, what drew me to the project? It's funny. Usually the answer to that question is they asked me to audition. I said yes. And then they paid me. Um, but, <laughs> but for the first time ever, uh, I have a real answer because I had just finished uh, Prince of Peoria the day before all of this happened with this movie. Like I finished Prince of Peoria and then I didn't have another thing lined up. I had no... I didn't have the movie. I didn't have another thing happening. I had some other stuff on the side, but I didn't have another acting job to go to right away. And the very next day after we wrapped uh, season one of Prince of Peoria, I got a text from a friend um, saying, hi, uh, a friend of mine is directing a movie. This is the cast. Um, it was written by this guy, Mark Medoff, who was nominated for an Academy Award years before you were born uh, for a movie called Children of a Lesser God that he wrote. That I've heard of that movie. OK, <laughs> so so Mark, who wrote the screenplay for this, wrote, wrote that uh, movie, too. And um, uh, he said, so, you know, there's an actor. It starts filming in 10 days. Um, there's an actor, uh, a celebrity who has uh dropped out of the film for scheduling reasons. Um, and uh, it's not my place to say who it was, but it was somebody more famous than me. And, <laughs> um, and said, uh, and I got a call and, and my friend said, do you have anybody who could step in at the last minute and play uh, a guy around this age uh, who looks like skinny, like he could ride a bike for, you know, like competitively and, and could play a Jew. Those were the three required. <laughs> and, um, and I was like, and he said, and I said, yes, I know exactly one guy. Let me see if he's available. <laughs> and, and he said, so do, would you want to read the script? And um, I said, yeah, obviously. Send, I mean, sure, send it over. And then I, I was leaving town, actually, so I read it on an airplane. And the second I got down on the ground, and I called him. And I was like, yeah, if, if, we, if they're interested and they want to have a phone call, I'd love to do this. And so... The answer to your question is what surprised me when I read it was that you don't see a lot of movies getting made anymore where stuff doesn't blow up and, you know, like crazy stuff doesn't happen. And just because it's really hard to get, it's hard to get little movies made because not everybody's sure that they're going to make money or that people are going to go see them. Right. And this was a script that wasn't about how it wasn't about how sort of sad the world is. It's about how hopeful the world can be, you know? And I think right now in the world, it's a really, um, it's a tough time. It's always a tough time. I mean, it's always a tough time. Sometimes things are going well for people. Sometimes they're going bad. Like it's always, it's, you know, everybody's life has struggles, right? And that's always going to be true. But of course, what I mean is that I just think that like there's this this energy in the world right now where everybody's so hectic and it's so chaotic all the time um, that to see a quiet little story about people really connecting with each other and loving each other and helping each other um, and encouraging each other and believing in each other uh, was something I really wanted to be a part of. And then add to that the fact that, you know, 
some of my favorite actors are were in the movie and this guy who I respect so much who wrote it and it just was I I I, I would have been crazy to say no to it you know I, I feel super lucky and in fact I said to my wife I said to Laura who's uh, around she says hello by the way hi Laura uh, <laughs> um, I think she's downstairs but um, uh, I said to her I was like wow that's crazy I was like you know I, I've <clears throat> I've gone along for a long time and uh, I just got offered, you know, usually I audition for things. I don't just get things handed to me. I was like, and this just got offered to me and it's like the fourth lead in the movie. I was like, that's crazy. She goes, yeah. She says, except that, you know, you've worked a really long time and worked really hard for something like that to happen. And so when it finally did, I was just really grateful that it was something that I was so um, moved by emotionally. You know what I mean? I think that that's... And the answer to your question in the bigger picture is that's the only reason to ever do anything is if you believe in it, right? Like yeah. sometimes as a grown up, you don't get that chance. Sometimes you have to do things because, you know, <laughs> responsibilities are responsibilities. Um, but if you get lucky enough to do something because you love it and because you believe in it, then what's better than that? You know? Yeah. 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 Um, Okay, so now I was wondering what your favorite episode of Bizarre Dark is this season. Because I had to ask you some questions about Bizarre Dark. I would be sad so. if you didn't. Um, <laughs> I, uh, well, I, I'm trying to think. I don't know if it's aired yet. Has, has the one with me and PK aired? No. That one. Okay, they're, we'll you know, be on the lookout for that. <laughs> yeah. They're principal, right? Yeah. yeah. There's, there's one, um, there's an episode that uh, features a lot of stuff about her and, and me. And again, I don't want to spoil anything, so that's all I'll say. But that was super fun. So that, that may be my favorite episode that I got to do. You know, the one that, I, the, uh, that I'm in. That may be my favorite episode that I'm in. What have you liked? Which episode have you liked so far this season the most? I don't know. All of them. <laughs> nice. I really and liked the season premiere. With yeah, well you got to because you got to meet Zane and Rodney, which yeah. is <laughs> like incredible. Yeah. Do you like the stuff with his hair? Yeah. <laughs> like the pulling his stuff out of his hair? Yeah. That's like maybe my favorite one of my favorite I will never get tired of watching that. I will never get tired of watching <laughs> Ellie Samui pull stuff out of his hair. It makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah yeah um so you're not tired of you're not tired of his aardvark yet you're no. still there you're still in, uh, good okay <laughs> yeah. good good to know good to know um so what's your favorite part about playing liam getting to be mean to children <laughs> <laughs> um um i well it's funny i like doing the british thing and also in Prince of Peoria, Gavin and I are both Americans, but we also have British accents in Prince of Peoria, so look forward to that. <laughs> um, uh, so that's fun, getting to, play, getting to play someone who's from a different country is always fun. Um, I, I like the challenge of the fact that, so the way that if, if anybody else has seen it, I mean, I presume some people have, but you know, I, I just have that blue thing behind me and I talk directly to the camera. <laughs> so usually, Here's a little secret about, about TV making. Um, usually the kids aren't there. Like uh, Olivia and Madison have to go to school or whatever else they have to do, or they have you know, so many commitments and obligations to go to you know, film a commercial, whatever, right? So usually by the time it actually gets around to me shooting my stuff, it's just me and like um, somebody standing off camera with a script just sort of giving me the cue lines so that I can say my lines so I'm not I don't actually get to do I don't like we rehearse it and I do it with them but then when it comes time to actually film it I don't actually have them there to do it with so I have to just sort of imagine um, <laughs> what it was like back when we worked on it before and um, initially that was super challenging obviously but the longer I've done the show now the more I really value learning how to do that because um, it, it, the most important thing in my job is staying focused 
and I'm easily distracted. <laughs> <laughs> so that's me been too. a good um, <laughs> that's been a good tool to help keep me you know dialed in and, and sort of concentrated and focused. Also, I really like wearing turtlenecks. <laughs> so I got that going for me. So that's nice. So that's cool. I like everything about it. I, I, I wouldn't trade a single ex- moment of the Bizarre Dark experience. I've loved everything about it. And the, the guy, Eric, who runs that show, who's an old friend of mine, um, is, is truly one of the best guys, not just in Hollywood, but in the world. And uh, it's been uh, everything about it. I, I'm just getting to be around Olivia and Madison and, and, and Ethan and, and DeVore and like watching them. I mean, they were, you know, they were like 12 when I met them and now, you know, they can drive, you know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. Like watching those kids grow up. It's like watching little brothers and sisters grow up. It's pretty cool. It's been, it's been cool. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay. So I was wondering, are you reading any good books right now? Reading any good books right now? Um, I am actually, uh, I am reading, um, I am reading a book that my friend Amy, um, is preparing to release. It'll be the second novel in a series and you guys, everybody, everybody listening and watching should check this book out. If you haven't, it's called L it's in a series called elementals. And this first L E L E M E N T A L S. And the second book is called ice wolves. And it's, um, it's basically like a, a fantasy book kind of in the spirit of Percy Jackson or something like that. Um, uh, and she's a really good writer. My friend, Amy, she's Australian. And, um, I actually did the audio book narration for the first book and I'll do all of them in the series, which is why I'm sort of preparing for the next one. So like, if you haven't checked it out, it's super cool. It's about these two kids who, uh, they're kind of like street kids, but they live in this like fictional kingdom and they can, it turns out they can morph and you know, like she can morph into like a wolf and they become, and they, they, so they, she joins a pack and then it's about sort of like a, it's like Harry Potter meets, Percy Jackson meets uh, meets some crazy werewolf thing. I don't know, <laughs> but it's like really, really cool. And 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 my friend Amy is a really good writer and uh, just knows how to tell a really cool story. And I like not only do I enjoy reading them just for personal enjoyment, but then I, when I get to do the audio books, like she's got all of these cool characters and talk. So I was talking earlier about it's fun to play someone British or I get to play like. British and Norwegian and South African and like all these really cool. So it's super fun. So uh, I, I might be terrible, but I don't think it's awful. So you, if you wanted to listen to it, you could get that. You could get that experience, too. And you could also like read and listen at the same time or whatever. But yeah, Amy Kaufman is her name. And the book's called Elementals Ice Wolves. And that one's out now. And so I'm reading the second one and getting ready to record that. And it's really awesome. And do you think that book is good for like uh 10 11 12 and up a thousand percent that is that is that is 100 percent why that's the one that leapt to my mind perfect (laughs) yeah perfect yeah absolutely cool Cool. so um or you guys could just read Foucault's Pendulum by Umberto Eco I mean you could either way Uh, (laughs) maybe sounds a little deep for us that 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 that's a joke you can ask your mom and dad to explain to you guys (laughs) Um, yeah, so, uh, my friend, <clears throat> my friend Joe wanted me to ask you what it was like working on Mad Men. Um, awesome. <laughs> like, awesome. <laughs> like, super awesome. Um, I mean, Mad Men, you know, Mad Men is one of the, you, you'll look back and 50 years at television history and you'll count that as one of the, like, 50 maybe higher best shows ever, right? Like it's one of the most important shows ever. And so getting to be a part of it was super cool. And I can't say like John Hamm, who played the lead on that show was like the best guy ever. Um, I remember one time I showed up to film and it was my half of a phone call. 
And so again, like the Liam thing, you don't actually need the other actor there because they're just getting my half of the phone call. You can have anybody read the lines, right? And usually that's what happens is actors, if they don't have to be there, won't be there. And he was shooting two episodes at the same time because of scheduling. And I saw him in the parking lot um, of, the, of the studio, the studio lot, as I was crossing to go to the soundstage. And he like pointed at me and he was like, I got to go shoot this other thing, but I'll be right back. I'm gonna, I want to do the lines with you. I was like, you know, I, someone can just, and he goes, no, 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 I want to be there for you. And that was incredible. And then Jessica Pere, the actress who played his wife on that show, um, is on a show now on CBS called Seal Team that I did. I did that show last year. And I got to work with her a second time. The first time I worked with her on Mad Men, I played her agent. And then the second time I played a CIA operative, like with her, like her, her like companion, her cohort. And so um, that was super cool. Uh, but I mean, in general, like you get to wear the Mad Men, you got to wear the coolest clothes, right? <laughs> like all the clothes were super cool. You got to say the best words. The words were like the best written words. It was just the super professional. And also it was the last season. I came in in the last season. And so it was nice to join up with something that was at the very, very top, right? Like to come into a thing at the very top of its game. It was super cool. It was a... Uh, it was a special moment. It was funny. I had, I, you can tell Joe, we can tell Joe that, you know, I had just come off of doing um, a TV series that I was on for three years that I was the lead of, but that not a lot of people watched. And I remember how funny it was. I was like, I was on a show every week for like two and a half years and people had no idea that I was working at all. I did like <laughs> five minutes in the first episode of Mad Men that I did and like my phone wouldn't stop ringing. You know what I mean? It was like, <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you, when you get on a hit show, people pay attention. It's really cool. That was, so that was super <laughs> fun. It was great. It was, it was a magical, awesome experience. It was really great. Now tell us what your cool. other show was. Oh, that was a show that I did back, <clears throat> I think, like 2010 to about 2000, late 2012. I was on a show called Retired at 35. And it, I played the guy who moved into his retirement community with his parents at 35 because, <laughs> because he was done with the big city life in New York. And a very famous actor named George Siegel, who's uh, the granddad on the Goldbergs, um, played my dad. And Jessica Walter, who's uh, Elaine Bluth on Arrested Development, played my mom. And like, I mean, talk about a talk about a dream cast to play your parents. I mean, that was amazing. And then Mar Marissa Jarrett Winoker from Hairspray on Broadway. And she just I just found this out because I didn't watch Celebrity Big Brother. Apparently she won Celebrity Big Brother this year. That's cool. <laughs> Yeah, like apparently she went on Celebrity Big Brother and like won. So like, that's crazy. So she played my sister. And then um, Josh McDermott, who's now on The Walking Dead, uh, played my best friend. So it was like a real, you know, it was like the A-team. It was a super fun cast. But it was just one of those things where uh, it was on TV land. And it was their second try at a TV show after Hot in Cleveland, which was a big hit. And Betty White was like a big famous person on it. And, da -da. and um, we just didn't catch the same audience, you know, uh, you just never know what's gonna. So it was cool to come off something that not a lot of people watched to go on to something that everybody watched. <laughs> it was fun. Cool. cool. Um, yeah, so you guys started in an episode of Trial and Error. I did. And I love that show. It's so yeah. funny. Um, it was so funny. Um, and so I was wondering if you have any fun stories from the set. Um, fun stories from the set. I, to be, I'll be very honest with you. I, I, my role in that was really easy to do. It was just come in and do one day uh, playing the manager of it was funny. I just realized I play a, a guy who works at a bank in Walking with Herb, this movie, and I played a guy who manages a bank in Trial and Error. Maybe I found my calling. Maybe my, <laughs> maybe I, maybe I should maybe I should just tell my agent that I'm only going out for bank guys from now on. Um, <laughs> but uh, but so so it unfortunately not unfortunately it was great, but I just didn't get a lot of time. You know what I mean? It was just like the one day. But I've known Nick DeGosto a little bit, who's the lead on Trial and Error, for a long time, and. Um, and he's just so great. And 
um, Sherry Shepard uh, was on her own show called Sherry a few years back with my friend Kali, who was the mom on uh, Live and Maddie. Oh. And, right. And who now, who just emailed me this morning, actually, and um, who now is on um, the Matt LeBlanc show, uh, Man with a Plan oh, yeah. on CBS. And so, like, I got to, you know, so I was like, oh, K- Sherry, Kali wanted me to say hi. And, oh, you're a friend of Kali's. So it was just, like, really nice and, and warm and, and super fun. I mean, you know, when you come in and you do a guest star in a thing, your job is to just not get in everybody's way and not break any of the lights. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so I've just been really lucky that some of the guest stuff that I've done has been with people that I happen to know, you know, because it gets a really nice home. Um, but I will say, I will say that the jokes on trial and error are the funniest jokes that I've maybe seen on TV in a long time, (laughs) because I, I will say that like setting up those shots and rehearsing those scenes and so forth, I've never seen the crew crack up as much. Like they definitely, like they know they're on a funny show. You know what I mean? That was noticeable. Because usually everybody just eats their sandwich and waits until action is called or whatever. And like, oh, okay, go ahead and set their lights up or whatever. But people were really like, oh, this is funny. We got something special here. And um, so, yeah, that was my experience on that. It was great. I loved it. Cool. Yeah, I loved that show. It was so funny. Yeah. Um, Every time my family and I watched it, we would just like, we would basically be laughing the entire episode. (laughs) So, yeah. Um, Yeah, so I was wondering if there's one project you've done that really stands out to you. Um, You know, I guess I have to... The answer I usually give to that is I don't have sort of a favorite. My favorite project is the next one because uh, I try to just keep looking forward as much as possible. Um, But, you know, I suppose uh, no matter how, who knows, if I do this for another 40 years, it'll probably be the same answer. Um, The very first time I ever did anything uh, was a show that I wrote. It was a one man show that I wrote a live you know, stage play that I wrote and did myself. And I did that for like two years. And that was like almost 25 years ago. But everything that has happened to me since then is a direct result of that. You know, it's a direct result of those hours that I put in and that hard work and getting really lucky, getting really lucky with right people seeing it and liking it and stuff. But I think that that may be the one that's the most special and always will be because, because I went out and made it for myself. I mean, I think about you, for example, I th- it's funny. I, I thought about you just a little while ago because I actually had like a crazy morning and a couple things went haywire and I was having trouble getting back to the house and da 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 to get on with you. And I was like, ah, I wonder if I can, you know, shoot you a, a DM and let you know that I'm running late or whatever. And I stopped and I was like, no, Maya would not be late to her show. Maya wouldn't <laughs> let anything stand in the way of her getting uh, in front of the microphone for her show. Like this, there, so I'm not going to let anything stand in my way. And, <laughs> and, and so like I think about you and this is your thing and you made it happen. And I mean, you can probably... Feel, identify with how I feel like everything else I've done is cool. And it's nice when people give you things and you like get a job or something good happens or whatever. But like the satisfaction of making this, like making something yourself all by yourself and then doing it and then having it succeed like your show has. I mean, what's better than that? You know? Yeah. I mean, don't you feel that way? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Like, isn't this better? If somebody came up to you and said like, Hey, Maya, come host a show. And then they like decided what it looked like and told you uh, who the guests were going to be, did all that stuff. I mean, that would be fine, I suppose, but isn't it so much better that it's yours and you made it happen under your own steam? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I guess for me, it's the same thing. It was like that first thing that I ever did. Um, 
And one day when you're wildly famous, you can tell me if it's still the best experience you've ever had because I imagine <laughs> the answer will be yes. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot what question I'm on. <laughs> That's okay. I forget everything all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what would be your dream show to guest star on? Oh, you mean like a show that's uh, already on that someone let me come and be on it with them? Um, just TV. Just uh, TV. Yeah. Not not as opposed to like as opposed to like oh this is a movie that might get made and we've heard about it. like ju like just a TV show right just like an ongoing TV show that's on the air now or yeah or it could be one that was like on the that's off there now but oh something like, that's this happened in the past too yeah. okay cool yeah yeah oh well if it, oh if i can include anything that's ever been on tv then i i totally know the answer uh the west wing oh yeah that's a good one yeah real good cool yeah yeah my the west wing is a huge part of the reason that i i came to los angeles like it was still on when i came out here and i was like all right here here, here, here here's my happy sad story I came out here and I wanted so much to be on that show. And Aaron Sorkin, who created that show, also created a show called Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip that was only on for one season back in 2006, I think. And I got an audition for it right before it came on. So the pilot, the first episode had been shot, but it hadn't been uh, aired yet. And they were casting people to do, I think, you know, like five episodes, seven episodes, 10 episodes, whatever, right? And I got an audition and I went in and when I was there, the casting people said, um, so just so you guys don't get freaked out, Aaron is in the room. He'll be in the room that you're auditioning in with all the other people and he'll be, he'll be the one reading with you. <laughs> and, it, and everyone got super nervous and I was like, well, good. Cause I need someone who can keep up with me. Cause I know how to do this. Right. Like that was, <laughs> that was, that, that was, that was, that was the dude that I was right. <laughs> But it turns out I was because I got the job. Like I totally got the job. And then the week that I was supposed to begin work, I think I was supposed to begin on a Thursday and on Tuesday, my agent called and he was like, um, good news, bad news. I was like, uh, I doubt it. I doubt it's good news. Just get to the bad news part. What? He was like, um, there have been some changes with the show. The character no longer exists. He wrote the character out. The, the role doesn't exist. The episode doesn't exist anymore. And um, and like and it just, and they were like they're going to look for something else for you and da 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 da. And if the show had gone longer than one season, they probably would have. But it got canceled, and then I never got a chance to do it. And then I and then I um, uh, poor Aaron Sorkin was giving an interview in a restaurant I was sitting in, and I walked over to him like a year later, and I was like, "Excuse me, uh, Mr. Sorkin," and he like remembered me and stuff. But I like felt terrible for assaulting him in the middle of his meal and being like, "I just want you to know, like it really meant a lot to me." And even though it didn't work out, it was, it was the biggest suck up job I've ever done in my life. Um, but uh, but so yeah, so if I could go back in time and get on the original one, the one that made me want to do all that stuff, heck yeah, that's the one I'd want to do, West Wing. Um, and as far as now goes, anything that's on now, oh boy. Um, I mean, I'm pretty lucky, right? Like I'm on the shows that I love being on. So like, I feel, I feel pretty grateful. Cool. Yeah. Um, is there a show that you're currently binge watching? Um, the Great British Baking Show <laughs> on Netflix. Um, I, hang on. I think my... Yeah, Siri thought I was talking to her. I was not. Um, uh, um, yeah, if you haven't watched it, it's, I mean, like, it, it could not be more perfectly titled The Great British Baking Show. <laughs> it's, it's a bunch of British people in a tent in England competing to see who's the best baker in England. And every week there's a, it's on Netflix, so uh, Laura and I can just sit in eight straight hours on a Saturday and watch all like, you know, 10 episodes, like back to back to back. And the thing about it though, is if you watch the great British baking show, my friends, be prepared to have some pastries in the kitchen because you're going to want to eat them. <laughs> Cause halfway through a binge, Laura and I are like, you want some cake? Like, yeah. I really want cake. Do we have any cake? And then, you know, then we have to call like Uber Eats or something to bring us cake. Yeah, I'm into I'm sort of into reality TV right now. And I'm a I'm a huge fan of The Voice. 
Yeah. You know? Um, so, like, I'm, I'm watching that. And, yeah, I'm kind of into just, like, those kind of things right now. I, I think because I act so much in the, you know, in my, for my job, that sometimes I just like to watch people not acting and just, like, you know, doing stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, although, uh, although I really like, I do, I like Ryan Eggold a lot, and I like New Amsterdam a lot. Oh, I have watched some yeah. of those, and I think it's pretty great. Yeah. And it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I yeah. really like that show. Yeah, yeah, he's great, right? Yeah, yeah, he's terrific. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, is there someone you've met that you've been completely starstruck by? Um, it happened last week for like the first time in my life. Oh. I was walking down the street um, here in Los Angeles. And, and here's the thing, I'm gonna do it and like nobody's gonna know who I'm talking about, but for me, it was the biggest deal of my life. There is a South African uh, man and woman like hip hop team called Deontward. <laughs> and, um, and I don't even know how to describe what they do. It's like Lady Gaga meets m m with a dash of Salvador Dali, the painter thrown in. Like it's, cra- <laughs> it's, it's, it's like an art exhibit exploded with lyrics. It's crazy. And I was walking along it, it, uh, it's, if you want to look it up, it's D I E second word is a N T W O O R D. And you can even just see you go and you type that into Google and see their pictures and you'll be like, Oh there, that's crazy. And, um, he's like six foot five and she's like five foot one. And I looked up, I was walking down the sidewalk and I look up and there's like a small woman with her head shaved on the sides, blonde, blonde, blonde hair and thing. And, I, and then a tall, tall dude. And I kind of laughed at myself. I was like, <laughs> could be DeAndre. And I was like, oh, it is. And, um, <laughs> and I called my wife and I said, I said, I just, I guess what happened? She was like, what? I was like, I just walked past Yolandi and Ninja from Deontward. <laughs> and she goes, Yes, that's also true. Their names are Yolandi and Ninja. I mean, come on. Too good. It's pretty Too cool. Good. Yeah. Too good. And she goes, she goes, is everybody freaking out? I was like, no, but I am freaking out enough for everybody. So, <laughs> so that, that's, like, that's like the one time. That's like the one time because I, it's weird, right? Like usually when I meet famous people, it's at work, right? So like, yeah. I mean, I definitely have met people way more famous. But usually it's, you know, saying hi to them before we're shooting a scene or something like that. And so you don't have time to be starstruck because you need to do your job. You know what I mean? Um, although, although, I'm trying to think if there's anybody. You know what? It's just, I just, eh, it's just not my thing. I'm, I, but I'm, I'm, I'm not, my, my wife, Laura's even, Laura's even more unimpressed than I am. Like she'll. Be a, this story that I tell all the time, this isn't an exact example, but it, this is kind of like what happens. You'd be like at a conversation at a party or something and she'll be nice and polite. And, oh, and chatting. Oh, so nice to meet you. And they'll say, oh, lovely to meet you. And she, they'll walk away and she'll turn and go, great, great, great. Who was that? <laughs> and I'll be like, I'll be like, you know, that was I, like whatever. Like, Jude Law. That was Jude Law. And she'll be like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then she'll go, right, right. Who's Jude Law again? Like, she just doesn't know, <laughs> doesn't pay attention, doesn't care. Um, I mean, I think I think there are people that I would freak out. Uh, like, I mean, the easy one is like, you know, if, if I ever, if I ever was in a room, with, my feeling is if you're ever in a room with Beyonce and you don't know she's in the room, you still know she's in the room just because suddenly you feel some light <laughs> shining on your back and you're like, something's happening. And you turn around and there's Beyonce, something like that. I think there are those people in the world, right? It's there are those people presence. who are just something else. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And I get a little starstruck talking to you. I mean, that happens, but you know, I've made my peace with it. I've gotten over it. I've learned how to manage. <laughs> Um, what else uh, so what song do you roll down the windows and rock out to what song do I roll down the windows and rock out to I'm going to tell you a little secret I recently bought a convertible so now I put the top down 
<laughs> and realize just how loud I listen to my music because I can see how far away from how many blocks away people are turning to look at the guy playing his music so loud. So I know how long. Um, I don't know if there's like one song. You got to remember I'm old. So, <laughs> um, so I'll still turn up uh, like my favorite band my whole life was the Beastie Boys. Probably still my favorite band. So if the Beastie Boys come on shuffle on, on my phone or whatever in the car, that's getting cranked up. That's getting for real cranked up. Oh, you know that, um, that uh, it's from a couple, three years ago now, so it's a little older, but uh, was it Bang Bang with Ariana Grande? Oh, yeah. and Jesse yeah, yeah, J. Yeah. Yeah, that and one gets Nicki my booty Minaj. bouncing. That one gets me. That one gets me going. Um, yeah, Je Jesse J. Jesse, I'll turn some Jesse J. Because Jesse J. Can flat out sing her face off. <laughs> as, as a fan of singers, that's I'll turn that up. What are you listening yeah. to right now? Uh, everything. So much. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Hey, how did how did it go talking to Josh and Ben? Uh, I kind of passed out. <laughs> I do too. They're, they're dreamy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I just, like they just called in and then I think I blacked out. <laughs> yeah, that happens. That happens. I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad they had a chance to call in. That was pretty cool. So you, yeah. were you a fan of How I Met Your Mother or are you just a yeah. fan of Radnor and Lee, the band? No, I was a fan of, so I watched Rise and then we started and then we watched How I Met Your Mother and Got then it. I was listening to their music. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, I don't know Ben, actually, but I've known Josh for a long time, and he's, he's, they're great. And their music is really, really good. They're yeah. really talented guys, yeah. 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 Um, so, oh, but, no, I think <laughs> to roll, like, I, like, to roll down the windows and rock out, too, yeah. I think it would be, like, really a any Brandon Michael Hall song. Yeah, okay. I get that. So. <laughs> I get that. Although, uh, although my friend who lives in Colorado, which was who I was with when I was seeing you guys there, just told me yesterday that it was two degrees at her house yesterday. Is that true? Is it really cold there? It was so cold yesterday, but it was like 60 yeah. today. Okay. Because yeah. I'm going to say there's not a lot of windows getting rolled down right now. No. It doesn't yeah. sound like. Yeah. 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 Well, it's like... <clears throat> Metaphorically. Like, Metaphorically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Got it. Understood. Like sometimes. Like now when it's cold out. Understood. <laughs> Copy that. <laughs> um, so if you could have any song playing to announce your entrance to a room, what song would it be? <laughs> Oh boy. Um uh, probably this this is a this is a toughie. Um Would it be fight for your right to party? Beastie boys. I mean, I don't you know what? I love that you asked that. I don't let's put it this way, I don't hold that against them. <laughs> uh, that they recorded that. You know what? It might be. <laughs> I was gonna say I have, I have I have lots of complicated feelings about Kanye West right now for lots of reasons. But um, <laughs> but Power, the Kanye West song Power, that's just a really good song. And like you know, if you walk into a room with the lyric "No one man should have all that power" playing behind you, there's no way not to feel pretty good about yourself. You know what I mean? If that's your theme song, <laughs> be like, yeah, okay, I'm doing all right. <laughs> um, oh my gosh I don't know you know what and I'm probably like you in that you ask me today and you ask me tomorrow and it'll be a totally different answer you know my mood yeah. changes so much that like, yeah. heck you can ask me in five minutes and it might be a different answer but <laughs> but something something like something with a heavy something with a heavy beat to it and I'm really into that that's you know something with a lot of bass I need that bass I need that I'm like Megan Trainer, baby I need that bass <laughs> all about it <laughs> About the bass. How about do you do you have a do you have a theme song? 
Okay, so it's between two songs. Please. That, so it's um, Brandon Michael Hall's song, So We Did, which is one of my favorite songs ever. Um, and then Legendary, which is like, which is by all these Disney Channel actresses. Yes. So. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, either one, either one would, uh, yeah, either one would get your motor going. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Either one, either one would let them know you've arrived for sure. <laughs> Yeah. Sure. Um, so do you have a motto or quotation that you live by um, I actually do and I will pull it up on my phone um, because I keep a series of quotes here in your phone in my phone and here it is um, it's a long one but here it is and, I, and I'm dead serious I, I look at this once a week, easy. Uh, you know who Morgan Freeman is, the actor, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. I think I talked about Morgan the last time because you asked me like who one of my acting heroes was and I was like, oh, is yeah. Morgan Freeman? And I was like, yeah. because you know, an 80 year old black man and me are exactly the same. Um, <laughs> we're, we're, we're not. Um, so, but Morgan Freeman said this and I think that it is super important he says, things happen as they should, I'm sure. Certain times in your life you say, well, I should be doing so-and-so, but it's not necessarily so. You should probably be doing what you are doing. Just do your best at it. I watched over many years actors moving on through life, getting jobs, making careers, and it seemed to be passing me by. And I thought, why is that? I'm not bad at this. I'm pretty good at this. Why is it not happening for me? Well, it was happening for me all along just not recognizably so. And the lesson I take from that is keep focused on what's in front of you. Um, stay present. You and I talked about this recently. Try and just be in the moment that you're in. Don't worry about the future. Don't think about the past. Be where you are and do all that you can do in that moment and the rest of life will take care of itself. Laura says that her motto is, and I love this too, Laura says her motto is to go through the day um, basically trying to be as happy and do as little harm as possible. <laughs> and I think, I think you combine those two ideas and that's a pretty decent way to get through, to get through life. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's, that's what I, yeah. Anything that keeps me focused on the here and the now you know, right now I'm here with you and we're doing this and I'm so grateful and I, you know, um, so appreciative that you wanted me to come on and, and that's this. And then when this is over, I'll see what happens next. But I try not to think two steps ahead if I can help it. It's hard, but I do my best. That's it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. My mom just said that's good advice, which I agree. <laughs> it's great advice. It's hard to do, but it is worth it. It's worth the effort. It's worth the effort. I also sometimes will just think uh, to myself halfway through the day for no good reason. Oh, I wish I knew a place to go for the latest news that would keep me in the groove. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's another thing that comes into my head a lot. Fortunately, I have the answer. I know where to go for that. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> in the whole hospital. I love the laughter for that because I can't see anybody but you. So I love the laughter just coming in from the <laughs> You know, Mike's He's pretty famous around here at the hospital. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah there, um, there's this place at school where, like, I always hang out and they let me print out a bunch of pictures. I mean, I didn't really give them an option. <laughs> um, so I pretty much just brought a bunch of pictures one day and I keep bringing them and they put it up on the um, wall there and there's one guy who I always quiz um, so I always make him tell me who's uh, hanging up on the wall <laughs> and it's yeah. pretty entertaining to see like watch him so, yeah, that's like going up to someone on the street and asking them to name like, you know, five states. It's like people don't know. People don't know. Yeah. Well, he does pretty well. But when I haven't quizzed him in a while, 
then <laughs> you should you should just put up you should just put up a bunch of like stock photos that you find on the internet of like people just random people and be like who's that and he's like i don't know and he'd be like you don't know who that is yeah you should do that yeah, <laughs> yeah i i can just print out a picture of a random person yeah and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or just yeah just print out pictures of like you know caterpillars and stuff and be like you don't know who that is she's the biggest star in brazil you know stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. mess with his head just like totally blow his mind yeah <laughs> okay. Well, okay so here's the deal we want to tell you thank you and all, and uh we appreciate you but she also wants her video right <laughs> is that it my oh yeah uh, yeah okay so we're gonna tell you goodbye I'm going to turn you off of the TV. I'm going to turn our music back on, but I'm going to leave you on with her so so you can help her out make a video real quick. So, you, you does that it. sound My good? Pleasure. Okay. Well, Jonathan, for, thank you yeah. so much for uh, Skyping yeah. in with us. Thank you, guys. You are incredible. You. We look forward yeah. to uh, especially those two upcoming projects, one now and one in in the new year, Prince of yes, Peoria. Yes, every, everybody watch yeah. Prince on, on Friday on Netflix. Okay, yeah. well, we, we'll look forward to it. Thank you so much for calling. Yeah. I'm Thank not disconnecting you, you. I'm just turning okay. you off of our channel. But Miles will <laughs> okay. still be there. All okay. right. Bye. Bye.